Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program and welcome back to my YouTube channel. How is everybody doing? So today I have decided something very important in our path to to interplanetary expansion in Kerbal Space Program. I've decided that we are going to be switching over to science mode so it's more realistic and after we finish unlocking the entire tech tree and colonizing the other planets or doing basic colonization on the other planets, then I think that KSP2 will be released. So that means that once we have finished with KSP1, then we can move on to KSP2 smoothly. So let's get started. So let's start the game and then start a new game. Oh, and I also removed all my mods, so... Yeah. Okay, so... The name is gonna be Kerbal Space Program. Game mode is science. Wait, did I say career mode earlier? If I said career mode earlier, I meant science, science mode. Sorry about that. Okay, so science mode, Kerbal Space Program, and difficulty options, let me check. Should I turn on this setting? I'm not sure. Actually, I'm gonna keep this setting off. Okay, so... Accept. And start. So, the game is starting, and we're just gonna wait until it finishes loading. <coughs> So it's going to take a little bit of time to load. Well, it's loading. Let's talk about Kerbal Space Program 2. Oh wait, never mind. It's almost finished loading, I think. Well, we're back at the Space Center with a slightly different UI because there's a science on top. Okay, thanks. I've got it. And there's a lot of old stuff over here. I mean, it's not old. Like, um, old and reliable. Okay, so let's see. What should we do? Basic rocketry, five science, all right. Okay, so first off, let's try out making the first, um, rocket that we can make. So the first rocket is gonna be with whatever parts we have. Okay, so here's Mark 1, and then let's check the probe cores. Never mind. Oh, this is all the parts I have available. And uh, never mind. Okay, so Mark 1 command pod. And then what else? This one, flea solid booster. That should be able to give us a fair suborbital flight. And then we can add a couple basic fins. Hopefully this can propel us, get it, propel? Propel us into the start of our journey with Kerbals and space. Okay, after this we need a parachute and <clears throat> we also need mystery goo containment unit for science i am still not sure what the mystery goo is but all right so next we have the crew well let's see who should be able to go to space first should it be val or jeb let me think about it for a second. I think Jeb should do the testing for suborbital flights, but Val should be able to go to space first. So this is just gonna be a suborbital flight and the first orbital flight will be for Val. Okay, untitled spacecraft. Let's rename that to first space.
Okay, first spacecraft may or may not be a spacecraft. All right, so since we're done with, since we're technically done with the first spacecraft, let's let's just launch it and see what happens. Hopefully, nothing bad happens. But if something bad happens, like what Jeb usually does, um, then we can just revert the flight. I mean, I'm not sure if Jeb is really that brave, but, well, we'll see. Jeb is supposed to be brave. He blew up a lot of rockets in other worlds, so. Don't worry, I think Jeb's gonna make it. Alright, we're on the launch pad, and let me see. This is the tiny rocket we have. All right, we'll enable the SAS, just stability assist, and let's see, what does it look like from the inside? Oh, okay, nice, nice. All right, let's launch. Wait, how do I get out of here? Oh yeah, okay. So, let's launch. Three, two, one. Uh, let's go. All right, here we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, 500 meters a second, and the fuel has run out already. I think. Yeah, fuel has run out. And we don't have a decoupler, so we can't, um, we can't really detach it. Alright, let's collect a bit of science. So here we have the mystery goo containment unit. Observe mystery goo. Hmm, what's gonna happen now? Is the mystery goo. The goo jiggles and wobbles as the craft flies. Alright, let's um transmit the data. Cannot transmit data. Never mind. Let's try this one. Oops, no, I'm supposed to right click. Okay, review data. Keep experiment. And then what about this one? Can we get more science from here? Let's see. So, observe mystery go opening up same thing keep experiment all right so that's basically <coughs> um that's basically how the mystery glue works let me just set the min pressure to 0 0.75 and Let's wait until this goes um, down and we start falling to deploy the parachute. <coughs> Alright, parachute is waiting to deploy. We're just gonna start falling. And wait. So, first mission's going pretty well. And, I don't know, I don't really want to wait though. Alright, so parachute has been deployed. And we're speeding up a little bit too quickly. Let's hope the parachute opens up completely. Um, so.
So this is what Jeb sees from his cockpit, but he seems pretty happy, so let's 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 just let Jeb be. Alright, craft is speeding up. And I'm still waiting. We're falling a little bit too quickly. I might have to eject Jeb if it keeps going. Uh oh. Now we're upside down, which is not looking good. Uh oh. I'm kind of worried. Oh, okay. I was really worried about Jeb not returning home safely. But look, we're now descending at like five meters a second. Six meters a second, actually. And Jeb is pretty safe, so nothing to worry about. Jeb's got the control, and he's facing downwards, so. But that shouldn't be an issue because Kerbals are okay. Um, okay with facing downwards. I think. Alright, so as we can see, there's Jeb in there, and he seems pretty happy with how things are going, so. I don't think I need to worry about him. Landing successful, and we did it upside down as well. Alright, so let's see. Recover vessel, and we should get a little bit of data back from that, and get some science. <clears throat> Alright, it's loading. Oh, and by the way, if you're wondering how I got this to full screen, I used Alt plus Enter. So, Alt Enter, and on, on a Windows PC. So that that worked for me and Yay! Alright, so we got five science, one point six science plus seven point zero science, so that's all. Um thirteen point six science, perfect. And Jeb is ready for the next assignment. Perfect. Now let's let's see, which one should I choose? We have thirteen Okay, so, basic rocket tree, and then it unlocks these. All right, research, perfect. And I'm also gonna use this one so we can get even more science. Okay, now we have three science left. Oh, wow. This costs a lot. And there's a lot of science stuff over here. Wow. Alright, so... If we're gonna unlock the entire tech tree, then we're gonna have to do a lot more missions. Alright, let's see. Archives. What is this? Flying low. One report. Mystery goo observation. One report. All right, perfect. So let's leave this facility and go back to the VAB, of course, and build one more vessel, which hopefully will fly and give us a bit of science. <clears throat> All right, so let's see. This time, we're gonna be making a new spacecraft. And of course, we're gonna have a command pod. Let me check the engines. Now we have a bigger engine and a liquid fuel engine, so that's nice. Let's try out um, making a 
small suborbital spacecraft with liquid fuel engine. With a liquid fuel engine. Oh, this fuel engine seems. Th this engine seems too big. Well, I'm not sure. But. It kind of looks. Um, a little bit too big for this. But that's okay because we can just add more fuel tanks. Oops. Uh, how do I copy? Never mind. Um, let's see. Let's add two more fuel tanks. And add this one. Alright, that should be enough to get us um, to orbit and back. And we're gonna de decouple this. Um, once we don't need it, so. <clears throat> Let's see, we also need a parachute for this. Alright, this seems nice, I guess. And let's see, what else do we have? Uh, decoupler, boosters, all of that stuff. We need a communitron. This communitron should be... Um... Okay, let's rotate the communitron. Alright, so let's rotate it perfect and move it into the ship a little bit. No, that's not good. So let's leave it like this. This is fine, I guess. Wait. I need two for it to look good. Alright, this looks good. And now we need... basic fins and a little bit of mystery goo and thermometers and what's this surface mount version of communitron 16 all right then uh, this should be good enough for our second flight. <clears throat> and... Let's see. Alright, so, let's see. This should work now. Okay, second spacecraft. And let's set the crew to, instead of Jeb Kerman, let's add Valentina Kerman. Because this is supposed to be an orbital flight this time. So let's launch it. Hopefully it works, but if it doesn't, then no reason to worry, because we can always reset it. Okay, so it's loading now. All right, now it's a slightly bigger rocket, and <clears throat> let's see, is Valentina okay? Yeah, she looks fine over there. Just a tiny bit cramped, but that's okay. And let's engage SAS, stability assist, and set throttle to two-thirds. And three, two, one, launch. 
All right, here it goes. So I'm just starting the gravity turn. As you can see, the thruster is gimbling. I'm just using the nav ball to navigate this. Uh oh. Looks like we're running out of fuel. So. Let's wait until we get to the apoapsis and look what happens. Actually, let's set it to prograde for um, better consumption of fuel. I decided that since we don't have much fuel left, I'm going to make this a suborbital flight, but it's still going to be Valentina as the first person in space. Alright, so we're out of fuel. Now... We have detached the lower stage, and we're stuck with the upper stage. Perfect. And it looks like the craft is holding up pretty well to the G-forces. Actually, there's not much g-forces but the craft is holding up pretty well to the heat and g-forces and the booster on the other hand looks like it's it might be um getting destroyed but i'm not sure let's see uh i don't see the booster oh look it's falling falling and I think it's gonna crash into the mountains okay so now we are pretty far over the surface of Kerbin so let's see whether we can do a few experiments or not so let's log the temperature here keep experiment and then Wait until we get higher in the atmosphere and log the temperature again. And then do this again. And then also do this again. Let me see how transmitting data works. So transmitting data has a 70% science value. So let's not transmit the data right now. And let me align this with retrograde just in case we go back um, into the <coughs> atmosphere. I mean, we're not going back for a long time, but let's just align it for now. And there's also the mystery goo containment unit. Let's observe the mystery goo for more science points. The goo seems to be getting very cold now. Let's keep it. And also this one. 
same thing, but we're also getting more points, I think. And let's also keep this and extend the communitrons. Perfect. Now let's configure the parachute. Min pressure should be 0 0.75, I think. And let's see what Val is doing. She seems pretty happy. Look at Val smiling away. I'm actually going to install two mods. The first one is Chatter, and the second one is um, Resizer. So it's going to be uh, better, but it I'm not going to install anything else to keep it like more vanilla style. So we don't have too many gameplay changes. So let's check how far we are. Uh oh. Oh no, this is not good. We're re entering the atmosphere. And I forgot to undeploy the antennas. Alright, Val, have a nice trip back into the atmosphere. We're gonna close the interior overlay and see what Val sees right now. The nav ball says that we're pointing towards retrograde and our speed is decreasing. And it looks like the heat might be increasing as well because there's sort of a red outline showing up now and then. I don't know if you can see it though, but you can also see that there's a lot of air passing which is causing friction which is causing this, the spacecraft to slow down. But there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Val is taking control of the ship and the atmosphere is getting thicker as we go down. And also, the spacecraft seems to be handling pretty well, um, because it doesn't have a heat shield, so. I was just kind of worried that it, since it didn't have a heat shield, um, it would, it would, um, disintegrate, but that seems to not be the case. I'm gonna face it towards retrograde for better stability. And once it's not flying at uh, such a high speed, then I'm gonna face it towards radial in. I think. Okay, let's see. Second spacecraft debris. I don't think I can uh, focus on the debris. Okay, so it's slowing down, and it's almost there. Almost at sea level. Just 8,000 meters to go. 8 kilometers to go.
Oh, I forgot to turn on the light. Oh well. It's on now. Okay, so it looks like the debris has crashed into the ocean. And... We are heading towards the ocean at a pretty similar rate, so we might have to deploy the parachute soon. But we wait until it's at a safe speed, of course. If I had aero brakes, then I would be slung the spacecraft down with them. But I don't have them, so. Let me see what she sees. Oh, look, there's the mun in the distance. Oh. I forgot to deploy the parachute. Oh. Poor Valentina. Sorry, Valentina. I'm gonna... revert... to vehicle assembly. I should have paid attention to... um... to the fact that I was pretty close to the ocean. All right then, let's see. This spacecraft is working pretty well, except that I forgot to um, deploy the parachute. All right, let's do this mission again. I mean, I'm gonna do this mission again um, off camera and I'll tell you the results in the next Kerbal Space Program video. Okay, thanks for watching everybody. Bye.